Did you get your locks uh, glued tonight? Mm. The face plates? No, I I have it written down here on the pad because I was I was fuming today on my way home from work. <laughs> I was uh, I was sitting um, and just waiting to to go home, and uh, I had a meeting who who dragged out, and we were sitting there and discussing, and I was looking at my watch, and I thought, okay, I, I need to go home, and then. It was traffic and I was sitting there. All right, I need to go to the hardware store. And I was thinking, well, I'm doing the recording tonight, so I don't have the time to do the glue up. Should I just go home? Or, And then I took an executive decision. No, I went to the hardware store. They were sold out of glue. <laughs> and, and then, I, of course, I, I'm, I need polyurethane glue for this, which expands to fill the crevices because it will give uh, a good support on the backside of the panels. And uh, all right. I'll go to the next door neighbor uh, of the hardware store, which is a, a different chain, which are three times as expensive. I go in there. They have a small bottle, costs an arm and a leg, and I get pissed off. I'm not fucking paying that. And then I go halfway out the <laughs> store and like, but that means I have to go to another store tomorrow and use gas and time for that. So I could just pay for the expensive one here and be done with it. And then like, but I don't like this store because they are generally a lot more expensive on everything. So I thought, fuck them. I'll rather spend more money buying a cheaper one tomorrow. And then, of course, I, I went home and I, I checked uh, the other stores around. And, uh, of course, the, the ones who has it in stock is on the other side of town. So it's like it's going to be a... a, a <laughs> China journey tomorrow and back just to get a little <laughs> bottle of glue. It's really annoying. So the short answer, no gluing. <laughs> what broken tools? Are you talking about your vasectomy? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and the uh, well. The segue was, uh, well, you can't uh, cry about the past and uh, <laughs> the tools are more worth to you than <laughs> whoever took them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a surreal experience. Um, of course, I, I went on Friday, I took the half day off, went to a clinic to get the procedure done. I guess there is no other word of saying it and i had only two questions for the doctor and one of them was uh, how many of these have you done <laughs> and <laughs> it, it does about 500 a year so taking into account the vacations and so on it, it's two a day on average so okay you probably know what you're doing and uh, it looks very good odds yeah he, he knew his way around his tools and my tool as well and, yours. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then uh, the, the the second thing was of course uh yeah you you should keep still for the next one to two days and then of course uh having probably a, a few uh few, few letters of the alphabet in some sort of diagnosis uh, i asked uh, what do you mean by by quiet or sitting still oh, okay you should be lying on the couch not doing anything that's the hardest thing i've done in my entire life it like i really? i came home went to the couch i saw a movie two hours and then i need to do shit i, I should be i mean at least i should cut some part on the cnc so i can glue up tomorrow and I mean, that doesn't take very much. And of course, before I knew it, I was standing in my workshop and then of course, all right, this is more movement than probably I thought there would be. And uh, all right, I'll go back on the couch, 10 minutes, cup of coffee. No, I, I need to do something. And I've never reflected upon it before, but I can't really sit still whatsoever. And it came to that point that my wife was, it was the second day. I'm bringing the kids to my father-in-law so you can stay at home. And you stay on the couch. If I see you out of the couch doing stuff, I'm going to be like... Rrr. And then, of course, 
I was just gonna, and I was sitting, and then, <laughs> of course, I'm blinded like a deer in headlights uh, <laughs> in our driveway when my wife and kids come back and just standing there with tools in my arms, like, oh, sorry, I, I just, I, I was just putting them away. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> and did you get, um, was it like keyhole? Yeah. And it's titanium clips? In... No, I don't think it was clips. I mean, they I th I th severed like. I think what they do is they they make two incisions on each side, and they pull the string out, and then they tie off two times, and then they yeah. they, they cut, and then they they burn the edges to be sure, and then they, oh, they okay. just yeah, tuck yeah. it back in and sew you up. And <laughs> and I walked, oh, of no. course, I. I I went early. I, I spent quite a few minutes in the car uh, breathing, and then I went in, and I was still early, so I was sitting there in the waiting room, uh, made myself a cup of coffee because they had that option. And then at 1 o'clock, the doctor came out and said my name, and all right, come in here, and he spent five or six minutes explaining the procedure and making sure that this was something you really wanted and uh, no one was holding a gun to your head, and... Yeah, all right. You lay down there, and uh, of course, uh, my assistant will prep everything. And I come back in and came back in, did his work, went out again. I was finished, went to the car, looked at the watch. It was 21 minutes past. So, I mean, the entire procedure from start to finish took 15 minutes. So, it, it was yes. really minor, and uh, yeah, couldn't feel a thing. I couldn't see a thing because I didn't want to. <laughs> but, uh... Yes, no, I couldn't. Couldn't look at that. Um, so I worked with a guy. We were working in the basement of a hospital in, uh, like a uh, what was it? A chlorification plant, basically. So they were, they had all these uh big chlorophores in there, but it was very hot, very hot, and the paint. There was this guy. He was painting in there. And I was like, oh, what's the crack? You weren't in on Friday. And he was like, no, no, no. I, I went to get the snip. I was like, oh, you went to get the snip? All right, Jesus. How are you doing? He's like, oh, I'm grand, I'm grand, you know. So he's painting away and I went off to do something else and I came back and he'd gone. And I was like, what the fuck? So he came back in the next day and I said, what's the crack? How come you, you ran off? So I don't know if it's the same with you, but I presume it is. They put dissolvable stitches in his scrotum. Yeah. And because of the heat and the sweat, the stitches dissolved, oh. and his, <laughs> his his ball sack started opening up in work. <laughs> ooh. Ah, ooh. Ooh. Yeah, that's a that's a visual. <laughs> so that's why I was asking these questions before I I, I went into it. Yeah. So my advice is to sit still, don't get too sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe that's why they say you shouldn't shower for a couple of days. Maybe it's more the stitches than anything. Yeah, yeah, because I think they're dissolvable, and because he was moving so much while he was painting. Yeah, because he was up in between, like um, it would have been like uh, uh, metal trays. Do you know what I mean? With with conduit and stuff running on them, and he would have been trying to climb up in between them and stuff. So he'd probably sweat and stretch in the wrong way. Yeah. yeah. Just <laughs> pop goes the weasel and the the fun the funny thing is of course um i i sometimes go to the local hospital to donate blood and w when they put the needle in if if they if they don't like hit a vein at the first time and they do a couple of stabs then after a day or two you can get a really like a blue patch of skin around the um yeah. the needle point bruising yeah around. And, and that's the same with this procedure. And of course, that's the one thing that didn't to tell me before I read up on it afterwards, because uh, I'm pretty sure I know where blue balls come from. <laughs> because it's like, <laughs> it's like, all right, this is, uh, this is colorful <laughs> and patchy. And yeah, it's like a Christmas decoration. <laughs> Jesus. And, that, and then the fun part is, of course... Um, you should stay quiet and don't do too much activity. And uh, the doctor, of course, he was doing small talk. 
And like, all right, so how many kids do you have and what their age is? And all right, that, that might be a challenge when you're trying to keep still because they are climbing all over you and kicking and screaming and they want you to run and chase them and whatnot. And so, of course, when I came home, uh, trying not to make any sudden movements or uh, provoke anything, and then, of course, my oldest daughter comes in and like, all right, let's just sit and uh, watch a cartoon or anything. Daddy needs to be taking it uh, peacefully and she's like all right but why like I, I was at the doctor and he said you 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 could spend a couple of days just uh, not uh, doing anything <laughs> too uh, rash and like all right she's she, 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 like okay but but why what did he do no nothing it's just a checkup and i just told it down really and then a couple of hours later our four-year-old and my wife came home and the four-year-old came running into the living room Daddy, 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 how's your cock? It's like, <laughs> all right, she got uh, the full explanation from her mom. And then, of course, my oldest, what do you mean? What do you mean? Daddy's had an operation. And it's like, <laughs> and I was standing in the kitchen making myself a cup of coffee. And I talked to my wife and like, all right, I wasn't sure what to say. So I just toned it down. And my wife was like, ah, the best is just to tell it as it is. <laughs> it's like, so... <laughs> God knows what they're telling everyone at kindergarten and preschool and everything. Yeah. My my daddy's got an operation in his ding dong. Is like, all right, thank you. I was just gonna say, yeah. when they go back to school, it'll be, <laughs> how was your summer? Yeah. Well, my daddy got an operation yes. on his cock. <laughs> <laughs> and you're and you're gonna be dead sure that they, of course, make their interpretation of whatever their mother said to them so they're going to say something that's highly inaccurate yeah. Like, yes. the doctors cut yes. his balls off yeah <laughs> I, was just, I was working I was working with a guy he's in his 30s like and uh, he's like oh yeah she wants you to get the snip uh, I don't know like <laughs> he was he thought he thought they were gonna cut his balls off. <laughs> I was like, "What?" He's like, "You know, like when a dog gets it done, like they, you know, they're they're not the same afterwards." I was like, "Did not cut your testicles off." <laughs> like this is a grown man in his thirties. So I was like, "No, no, they oh they, God, they, no, they, they put you head first in some wellies, and then they give you a big whack over the head, and then they snip, and then." <laughs> No testes. Just a pair of pliers. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. They just they they tie uh, they they put an elastic band around it till they drop off yeah. like they do with sheep. <laughs> <laughs> I just couldn't believe it. Like a grown man. Like oh Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, I laughed so hard at him in his face. <laughs> but of course, oh, it's uh. <laughs> It's been a hot topic uh, amongst my my friends and especially our wives <laughs> because uh, I think we talked about this as a, a a possibility on an earlier episode and and a friend of me or the wife of a friend of mine just texted me that yeah Christian got this done at this clinic and they have a like a drop in on Tuesdays so <laughs> all right I'll make some notes <laughs> <laughs> and now of course. Uh, I have some friends who have done it, some who's reluctant to do it, where their wives are really eager and it's like, all right, maybe 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 you can call him and tell him it's not a big deal. And it's like, so I'm getting all these requests and like, can you tell him that he's not dangerous at all? And <laughs> Would you do a TED talk to her husbands? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, one that, of, one of our talk? mates yeah. got it done. <laughs> One of our mates got it done. I don't know if you had it over there. There was um, there was like a voucher. Uh, like it was uh, they'd send you out every week. They'd send out like uh, special offers. Um, <laughs> two two for one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, something like that. Uh, so like it was called. Oh, there was a name on it, like something like Kishi, like uh, uh, voucher or something like that. You know what I mean? But it was like, you know, you'd get a cheap hotel uh, two nights away for like a hundred quid or, you know, you'd, you'd, but he went and got a vasectomy on this like 
a voucher app and we were like are you for fucking real <laughs> like, like that's one thing I think I'd spend a little bit of money on but like <laughs> That's... But he was also after he had twins and uh he was due another kid and him and the wife both told us like um if it's if this one if this if this wasn't if this one isn't twins we're gonna have another one straight away because uh the twins kind of just looked after themselves as they're growing up and blah 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 <laughs> and then they like the, the twins were two the twins were two girls and then they had a boy and within six months or eight months maybe having the boy he was like yeah I'm going to get the snip we're like what about having another kid straight away no <laughs> no. <laughs> <sighs> But that, that's the the funny part, though, of course, when you go into the web page of that clinic, and of course, this is, it's basically private clinics that does all of this in Norway, and some of them, they also provide a various of procedures, and of course, this, this is the only one that is exclusively for males, naturally, <laughs> uh, and, then, yeah. and then they have a lot of other procedures, which is more cosmetic uh, surgery. And of course, I went in and checked the price. And when you see the price list and it's like, yep, this is the procedure for men. It's 15 minutes. It's very cheap. And then the next level up is like uh, very minor. But of course, it's targeted towards uh, females and it's like crazy expensive and it just goes upwards. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what half of the things on that list is. And I, <laughs> I feel appalled because it is an industry I really do not like. I'm luckily with age, I also appreciate age in my partner as well i mean we have lived the life together and it shows and it's just a, a good track record and spending that amount of money on trying to make it better which it it seldom does doesn't look better so it's yeah but it's crazy to me and of course it's is the discussion we had with my wife as well. I mean, this is, it's the cheapest, it's the simplest, it's the best procedure, the same procedure for my wife, um, because she has a friend who has done it because her husband is scared of needles and anything. So of course she did it, but for my wife, if she were to have the similar procedure, it's that's a full blown operation. It's not, uh, and it's it's high and recovery time is massive as well. Yeah, and it's uh, it's highly, uh, it's more likely complications. for complications and and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, and then of it's course, it's a no brainer. Like, to be honest, for for men to do it, like it's definitely something on the cards that I need to look into. But like. Yeah. It, it's it makes so much more sense yeah and the other thing is like it's reversible <laughs> i mean you can go oopsies backsies and of course the, there is a small chance of when if you're wanting to go back that there are some complications that there is also a risk that that procedure doesn't work but yeah but still in a worst case scenario if you end up all right shit we we want another kid you're you're still producing so they can actually go in and extract it and like inseminate yeah so of course it's 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 more complicated than the natural way and maybe not as pleasant yeah. but i mean it's you have so many options that it's a no brainer actually so that's why i was asking about the titanium clips because i know someone that has had the procedure done and they just clipped it vast friend with titanium clips yeah. and then that's totally reversible yeah so he he has since had it reversed and had another kid yeah, and I, I think not for the possibility of having it reversible, but if the doctor asked me, do you want me to cut and sew or do you want titanium in your body? It's like, Vol titanium. Wolverine all the way. So uh, <laughs> give it to me. <laughs> I'm not sure how that's going to translate into a superpower in the Marvel universe, but uh, well, I'll take, yeah, I'll take whatever I can know. get. Yeah, They do R-rated <laughs> stuff now, so yeah. <laughs> Have you watched um, the Hacksmith uh, Finding Vibranium? Yeah. No, I haven't seen that one. Uh, amazing. That was it amazing. 
he yeah 3d prints uh his collarbone and then coats it in this nano coating like it's only what was it two mil thick or something like that yeah something like that and it holds something like four four thousand pounds yeah where like yeah it's just nuts have a look it's yeah. worth a watch that's ridiculous ridiculous uh, but good i think i think we we had talked about that earlier on this uh, podcast about prosthetics, and there is also a a girl on Instagram. I think she's called Tilly something. She's she's an amputee, yeah. and she got the mechanic hands, and she's like, she has worked with a company that. All right, I, I don't want the shitty prosthetics that try to mimic regular hands just to make other people comfortable seeing you in public i mean i don't have hands i need prosthetics i want them to look rad so they're really mechanical they work she she's held ted talks and of course she has one that uh, have uh, uh, bling and diamonds and glitter on them for nice occasions and she's going the totally opposite way and i, I really like it because i mean if i if i needed a prosthetic leg or something i as a maker, I, I yeah. would accessorize it. <laughs> yes. I'm thinking the leg from the alien out of aliens, maybe something like that. <laughs> That's what I'd have. <laughs> I'm, I'm so glad you said that because the, the film I actually saw on the couch, I was going to, was alien. Yeah. I, I saw the, uh, I think it's, um, there is a new alien movie out or com- coming out. Yeah. And then of course, uh, Romulus. Yeah. Romulus. And I saw yeah. someone said it, it's basically a, a bad remake with too much uh, references to the first one. And then I thought, all right, it doesn't sound like I really want to see this one, but I really want to revisit the first one. So, but I, I couldn't find it uh, at the rental place or at YouTube or anything where you can rent it. So, but they had the aliens, the second one. So I saw that one, and that's very good. Yeah, I, I love the first and the second one is okay. The third one is still okay, but the suspense in the first one because they did not really have the technology to to show too much of it. Yeah. That was a brilliant movie just because of that. And on the second, you got to see more of them, of course. Uh, and it was relatively new in that genre at the time. But once the third came out, it was just a, a splatter movie, basically. So there was no surprises yeah, yeah. there. But And after that, it's gone like way too meta and the mixing of... Uh, yeah, Stupid. Yeah, I actually, I didn't want to stop you on your roll, but I did want to ask you what movie you watched. <laughs> <laughs> Go, going back to the uh, doing cosmetic uh, surgery, I, I heard on, uh, was it Save the Third podcast, they had a, an interesting thought experiment. If you could add centimeters to your pri- private parts for, say, uh, 50,000 euros per centimeter or gain 50,000 euros per centimeter that you took <laughs> off, where would you end up? Would you add or remove? <laughs> centimeters. So what's that in inches? <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean... Well, like, so how how small like, oh, would you go? How big would you go for what monetary gain or what monetary cost? Would you take out a more just to... All of ours are big enough to fill two prams, right? <laughs> Super. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think I, I would, of course, have to discuss a, a split ratio there with my wife because, yeah. I mean, I would like to get that new lathe, but I, I want the bigger one, and that costs that much. That is one and a half centimeter, but what is your cut here? Because, I mean, you are losing out as well. And then... <laughs> When you said bigger one there, I wasn't sure you meant the lathe or. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> let's not uh, let's not uh, um, dig into the details, but and then the question is: Is it reversible at a later stage? So is it like a bank? You take a loan, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then you can pay pay it back, yeah, yeah. and then. They... <laughs> oh. Hmm. I'd, I I'm pretty happy as I am, so I don't know if I want. 
Yeah. <laughs> I, d- I don't think I'd pay to get it enlarged. And I don't know if I want to lose any. I don't know if I have enough to lose, lads. <laughs> you don't need the cash flow either. No. Yeah. Uh, well, I could do with some cash. But uh, not enough. <laughs> um, like, you'd have to up the ante. If I was to lose a centimeter, my mortgage was paid off. <laughs> Go for it. Go for it. Take it. But uh, 50,000? 50, nah, it's not enough. I'd need more. Yeah, but that's, <laughs> that's, that's the thing, though. If, if you put it into perspective, like, all right, you'll be debt free tomorrow. The mortgage will be paid off and everything. All right, take, take it. But if someone just took that amount and said, if, if I present this to you in cash, would you? Mm, no, I'm not sure if there's the limit. But once you put it into perspective, it's like, all right, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Everything I'll has be a debt free in the morning. <laughs> take it, take it all. No, maybe not all. But of course, if, like you know, little stove would be all right, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Once it reaches out of my pants to pee, you know what I mean. That's <laughs> I would say that's the basic level. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but. I mean, this took a turn, but before before you finish the sentence, I was already on an extra set of arms. Uh, but of course, when you said add centimeters to your private parts, I was like, okay, uh, <laughs> maybe not a second set of arms. But <laughs> but of course, do, do, yeah, I was... doing soldering work and as a maker, I have always like, I, I missed that third hand option to just keep everything in place while you're working. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> hmm. I did think you were going to say, what What would you add as opposed to your, your member? <laughs> so what would you add, KJ? If you could add a, a prosthetic limb, what would you add? It'd probably be an arm, I suppose. It'd have to be, wouldn't it? Yeah, if you could, could control. I have they've given it some thought, but the question is how do you actually control it? Because having an extra set that would training to use that new arm, that's not gonna be easy, I guess. Something as complex yeah. as a hand. Well, I've seen people in accidents making... and then they have the recovery periods and you can learn to walk again takes yeah. a few months but, the, but, but if you add a third arm with a hand that you never had before hooking up to some neurons or are you mimicking so you're both you right you have two right arms and they do the same thing <laughs> yeah you're right i'd be johnny mnemonic instead i'd plug and play and i'd know everything kind of matrix style that'd be that'd be me that'd be my prosthesis <laughs> i don't want another arm just plug me in and then I know Kung Fu and I'll be happy. <laughs> but then the question is, can you... I mean, that's a, that's another philosophical question that's popular to ask. If you... After the Matrix came out, I mean, if you're, if you're happy in the dream and you wake up to a, a worse reality, like put me back to sleep. And then the, then the question is, if you could put like a plug-in and then you could mentally be in the dream world uh, in your most uh, elaborate perfect dream and i mean some machine would just harvest your body heat for uh, like a battery and you could spend your rest of the life just living in that dream not knowing you were in a dream would you then still hook up to that cable <laughs> uh And of course, that that's that's not what I meant. What I meant was like if I could just learn something by plugging it into the back of my head and go, now I know kung fu. Now I know how to blacksmith. Now I know how to. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but that but that's that's ooh. <laughs> you you could this in is your, hard in you your, could your, sec- in your second language. But what I'm trying to say is, would you? I mean, then you would then, then you would just know it. You you wouldn't have the process of learning it first. 
if you yeah. if you okay. if you know what I mean. So if you just plug it in and yeah. it's just a part of reality, like it's always been there, and then it's like, would you then enjoy it? But then, of course, it would feel like it's always been there. So you wouldn't know that you're missing out on something you didn't have before. So there's a mind. Mm. It's, a, it's a mind bender. Yeah. Yes. And I think that the thing, Very... the thing for me is if operating any kind of technology into my body. When you choose to do that, because if if you have, oh, yeah, I have I have a computer in my head. I did it in 95. I mean, yeah. having that kind of tech now, what good yeah. good is that? So when do you choose to actually do it? Oh yeah, I have an head, I have an iPhone three in my head. Great. Your head would be massive as well if it was a ninety five computer. <laughs> <it>? Yeah, <laughs> fans for ears and that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, it it would just work. I mean, if you have a newer one, you would have to every other week, uh, and you can't choose. A, a car would just pull up to the side of the work while you were doing any task and just you're getting updated but i'm just in the middle of the <laughs> it's like you're out for a half a day because you're getting a software update yeah that yeah. is if the company who built it actually exists anymore wasn't there someone who did eye prosthetics or something like that that were really really cool but they were too expensive so they went out of business so people who actually had those some kind of bionic oh, no. thing they stopped working because they couldn't upgrade them anymore yes. something like I don't remember what kind of thing it was but yeah you have to make sure that it's actually a company that's still in business or but it wasn't someone that had chosen to like it's not a <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It was. It wasn't like a, a choice they had. It was like you can. We'll be able to make you see now with these bionic eyes. That's terrible. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, it's not like, oh yeah, I'm going to get a, a QR code in my wrist so I can just swipe through my door or something. Like, do you know what I mean? Or an IR, sorry, uh, so I can swipe through my door. Oh. You seen some guy did that? Did yeah. you see that? No. Yeah. You... He built. He, he built like. Um, he built like a, a house in the back of a in, in the front of an airplane and his his like he had a, a a reader in his arm and he could just swipe it past his door and the door would open or whatever so he didn't have to carry keys but uh like that person needed that that's horrible that's yeah. terrible and, and i mean having something that maybe there's a security breach and someone hacks your whatever thing you have in your body and nope you oh, we, we've turned off your, uh, your right arm uh, if you don't pay this amount in bitcoin you won't get it back <laughs> oh shit the mancurian candidate like do you remember that no. did you ever see that no no ah uh, there was there was a there was two of them uh the a remake the i think the remake had um uh, Will Smith possibly in it. Basically, the American government implanting things into people's heads. They get a phone call when they heard the thing. They turn into assassins. Um, yeah. So the implant like switched them off. They didn't know what they were doing. Like, and then they'd wake up after it, not knowing they'd killed someone. That's what I was thinking oh, of when yeah. you said that. Yeah, that could be. I can hacking, hacking into your brain. That's how it rings a bell, but I can't remember the details. But I mean, yeah, the, Ray the, Donovan. The fact of waking up again and don't remember anything of that—that's that's scary. That's the same with. Let's say you get that implant, and you 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 now get uh, you've been blind your entire life, and someone puts an implant in, and now you can see. And then they go out of business, and then the technology fails on you, and then now you're blind again. But you've had the pleasure of knowing how it is to see, but those implants have, of course, done something to you so that you can't just replace that later because they majorly fucked up when they installed it the first time. That's that's a real bummer. Yeah, that's horrible, yeah. Terrible. But I, that's what I was going to say. One was elective and the other isn't. The one was needed and one was elective. Yeah, yeah. yeah. terrible. But yeah, surgery I, I, for fun, I've never understood that. It just seems weird. Body modification? Yeah, when it's the, I mean, it's one thing when you do piercings and tattoos and that sort of thing. When when, but when it's actually like a surgical procedure, then I don't, I don't get it. Did you, 
You ever see that dude that put a metal plate into his head with uh, screw holes in it and he could give himself like a metal Mohican? <laughs> he screws it into his head. <laughs> now we're talking, man. Uh, in the wintertime, you can put a, a, a mount for a flashlight. Uh, yeah. yeah. A GoPro mount. Do you know what I mean? Oh, as, <laughs> as a maker, that would be bloody brilliant, wouldn't it? I mean, yeah. a tripod on a phone, that's cumbersome. i'm so fascinated by these stories you have people that have all their limbs and they they feel so out of place because they have felt like an amputee for their entire life but they have all their limbs and there are actually people that have they have struggled mentally with the fact of them not being an amputee, but they've identified as that. So they've had their leg removed. And after they after they have done that, they say that uh, now I actually am the way I've always felt. And that's just, it's insane. But of course, the, the human brain is, you can't really understand it fully. So of course, they're... they're it's probably something that can happen, but it's really fascinating to me that you have people that Jesus. choose to remove an arm uh, yeah, that's just so because they've always <laughs> felt like they were an amputee. And I mean, that is, I mean, talking about what I've never even of, heard of that. Yeah. And then, of course, I, I can talk about what I would do to my prosthetic leg if I lost it, but I'm not going to remove my leg because it would have been cool to have a titanium shin plate with a, a gun mount and a rocket engine <laughs> attached to it. <laughs> it was like, uh, at Maker Central where I had breakfast with uh, Ian Davis, the, the guy who did a robotic hand. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. And, we, for, uh, and I said, oh, that's so cool have something like that and he's like yeah but i would much rather have it like you and have two functioning hands that would be much better <laughs> yeah yeah of course but but still if you, if you didn't have that uh, so yeah one you should all be keep what you have because that's probably better than not having it and trying to replace it with technology because that's true very much true, true. Yeah. Gonna work. <laughs> keep what you have here, lads, did you hear? There's a little uh, rumor. Don't tell anyone now, but there's a rumor floating around the the old ethers of the internet that um there might be possibly a second season of Bad Audio. Ooh. Possibly. I've heard some whispers in the wind, but I mean, yeah. I, I've never dared to get my hopes up. No, me neither. Yeah, I, I I don't know. Like, I don't tell anyone now. Like, don't tell them I told you. But there's there's a possibility, a slight. I've heard. Yeah, that's um. Yeah, we'll keep we'll keep it to the south. But I'll keep my ears out. I'll, I'll listen yeah. extra carefully to the the evening winds. <laughs> we see the, the the powers that be who decide these things. Possibly. <laughs> You never ever know. But then, the, does that mean that there might actually be something in if you wish for something hard enough? I mean, it's a, yeah, it's a t- tantalizing thought. Yeah, I think I I blew out my candles on my birthday cake and wished for it to happen. <laughs> oh, so we have you to um, to blame. <laughs> I hear there might be a sponsor as well. Uh, hi, Chi Chi, is this hi? Ca- hi. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think there's a few of the bad audio uh, podcast hosts that uh, have been sponsored by some tool brand. Hi, hi, cheeky, <laughs> hi, cheeky bastards. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm not gonna butcher, butcher the name because I'm very much now wanting to get on that bandwagon. Because in the beginning, I thought, well, they they are having trouble shipping it to certain locations within the UK. So they, they are obviously not shipping it to Norway. So I'm not going to bother asking. So I'm going to pretend I'm sitting on my high horse and I, I don't want free tools. But then I saw they are on a Europe tour and they have like this giant Ooh. trailer and they are stopping in all the major cities, also in Scandinavia to do like tool shows and so on. So you bastards, you're here as well. <laughs> I want free tools. So where's the yeah. where's the closest show? And then 
how do I name drop the bad audio podcast? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you should start tagging Bosch and all your stuff. You know, I, I I have done that. I have seen that they have watched some of my posts. Not a single like. Have they reposted? No. And there is some other Bosch. very large and very good Bosch tool maniacs out there who post really good content. And they also had a competition. I, I, I get their newsletter because... Obviously, I bought all their tools. Fanboy. Yeah. And uh, th then they had like, all right, we, we are having, um, we're giving away free tools for testing. And oh, to, yeah. to get them, you you need to uh, post uh, our, our review on social media. And then there was a form to fill out. And of course, I filled it out and sent it in. I can have free tools. And uh didn't even get a reply and after that i kind of like uh do i want to do like diresta do i just want to make a, a template of my name and just spray paint all my bosch tools because fuck you you're not getting any <laughs> free ads from me but, but then again I, I i don't like to uh well to paint my tools if i don't have to but yeah yeah maybe there's a way you could laser the bosch off Put your own name on it. And the the problem, what I've been thinking is, is there some way of just altering one of the letters and then get some profanity out of it, so I can just also have a <laughs> laugh without removing the entire thing? Cox. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> but also, that is uh, I. In the last year or so, now you can actually buy adapters between all the tools and Bosch has at least the blue series which I ended up buying the battery pack for and then locked myself into is mainly focusing on the trades so there is I mean if you take Ryobi they have a lot of tools that are really good for makers and prototype building and so on but they, you don't get that in the Bosch line and of course, when it comes to woodworking, I think DeWalt has a lot better lineup with palm routers and so on. And yeah. but now they have, as long as you have the chargers, then you can have the adapter plates. And now you it, they cost next to nothing to use Bosch batteries on DeWalt equipment and so on. So I'm... I'm starting to buy other tools as well because it's very easy to buy that because it's a better tool. I get the adapter plates. I can use the battery package because that is a big cost driver, having a double battery system. Yeah, so I'm running three battery platforms and uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, for, this, for that reason that the company, I'm I, most of my stuff's Metabo and the, they didn't do nailers pin nailer or first fix nailer uh they don't do a, a router they don't they didn't do a collated uh plasterboard gun so that's all dewalt and then i have two uh, a trend orbital router and or orbital sander even and a trend uh battery miter saw because they were cheap <laughs> yeah and of course, it it is a hard realization uh, because you <laughs> you have to admit that you know yourself. But I don't have my tools in my car. I don't need to bring it out to a job site. So having a Devolt and a Bosch charger at my charging table, I mean, it's not yeah. that extra hassle that I'm making it out to be to actually have two battery packs. So of course. Uh, and sometimes they have like a, a campaign on a palm router where you get it really cheap because they're they are throwing a charger and two batteries in the pack for no extra cost. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, there's no problem having several battery platforms. It, it's it's not the hassle that it's made out to be. No, oh, as long as you remember yeah. to charge them and you don't burn through the batteries at an alarming rate, then it's fine. Yeah, and that's the thing as well. If 
with the 18 volts battery packs, I mean, the internals are the same. So it's, it's a different connector and the charger are also basically the same if you start looking into them. Um, and they charge relatively fast. Even the biggest batteries, it's like if you if you slap it in, it's fully charged in 40 minutes. If you uh, leave it in for five minutes, it's at 30%, which will get you a long way. And I, I remember, I think it was when I was a kid, we had some old uh, Makita drills with the... NICAD. Oval NICAD long batteries where you had to put, yeah. you had to charge them for two days before you can use them for 10 minutes. And the, <laughs> then, of course, it was an issue. Today, if I realize that I'm out of batteries, I need to charge them. Okay, I'll, I'll put one in and I'll go and have a cup of coffee. And when I come back, it's enough juice in it to get the job done very often. So it, even that is not the big problem as it used to be. Mm. Yeah. I remember when I started working in the building trade, it was all NICAD and one of the lads every morning would come in and put the battery onto charge. I'm like, you don't know if it's charged or not. He's like, no, but you need to get it charged. I'm like, it's a chemical memory. If it's not fully empty, it's going to think it's empty and you're not going to get a full charge out of it. But he just couldn't understand. <laughs> like, So it just fucked the batteries up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, what you need is more batteries of art, yeah. like 13, maybe, <laughs> you know, think, and then, you know, I'm actually at the point now where I've started ordering just batteries when they are on sale, because you can't have enough batteries. It's like batteries and clamps. Yeah, that's, uh, um, and of course that, that is also the thing as if, if you had too many batteries before. Uh, you didn't uh, get to cycle them enough. So then they were actually ruined by just not being used enough. So they had a sweet spot. Yeah. Uh, that is not the case anymore as well. You can charge a battery and you can leave it on the counter for years and it will still have like 80% plus uh, capacity. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so, so I'm slowly buying uh, batteries here and there. Um, I actually stopped myself from buying more batteries. I have 10 now for my Makita system. <laughs> And four mm -hmm. that are broken that I'm planning to fix. <laughs> yeah, but then... Oh, cool. I don't have enough you... shelf space for them anymore. <laughs> but then you realize that, of course, you, you just don't... You, do, you don't need it just for your tools because, of course, Bosch has the 18-volt line and they have the 12-volts. So for the 12-volts batteries, you don't need a, a converter at all. And on AliExpress, they sell these uh, clip-ons for the batteries with two leads out uh, and a switch and a fuse or whatnot. So if you have any kind of product that runs out of 12 volts or your bicycle lights or uh, the, the Christmas decorations you put in your outhouse and whatnot, they usually run on like 12 volts. So when you realize you can buy all those attachments and use your uh, very good uh, tool batteries for that as well, then, then you really can't have enough of them. That's true. I mean, I, my, my theory is one for, try and have one for one battery for each tool and then a couple of spares. That's my theory. Yeah. And that's probably good enough. So I need a few more DeWalt's. <laughs> and that's the thing as well. You, of course, the more you have, the more you use, but I have, I'm, I'm very happy with my uh, battery powered uh, vacuum cleaner so I, I need a battery for that that is running and then of course you use the orbital sander and you have the battery in that and of course you need one drill with a drill bit in it and then one with the bits in it so i mean i'm easily using four batteries at the same time and then if you're working in some dodgy place i also have the lights as well so that's five batteries yeah. so yeah, yeah. And then you need to have one for each that's charged in case they run out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so you're up to 10 already. And since I use the batteries for gardening as well in the lawnmower and the uh, strimmer and that sort of thing, then they really, then it's, then I get to cycle them because then you burn through them rather quickly. That's, yeah. oh, I'm so envious of that. Makita made an electric bike. 
Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I so want it, but uh, of course, if I had the the Makita battery system, I would buy it instantly. But I also saw you can buy this kit now, where you can use a regular drill, uh, and you can convert it to run uh, uh, any bike, basically. And I think two years ago, Bosch launched the most powerful hand drill ever. It has a separate handle, so you can keep the torque, and it also have like a a torque sensor. So if it spins out on you, it will instantly cut off because we'll just, it it will break yeah. your wrist. It I think it's hundred and fifty newton meters of torque, but it it costs five hundred pounds, so it's expensive. But I was thinking that is more that's double the torque you get in your standard electric bike that you can buy i mean which is built as an electric bike and of course uh, i was thinking what if i placed like two of these drills in one of these electric toy tractors for kids and of course i would have to put them in a v position so it looks like a v engine with the battery coming out <laughs> of the hood and so on and then you were like got uh, like 300 newton meters of torque on a <laughs> toy but they're so expensive, I can't really, I, I, I don't have the money to buy one of them because I don't really need a drill with that torque power. But uh... <laughs> Yeah, you say that, but like you probably use it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> but uh... have you seen Izzy Swan? Um, there's, there's a Milwaukee uh, angle drill for drilling joists and like you drill you can like drill four inch holes with this thing. It's called the hole hog. <laughs> oh yeah. So like, it, like, yeah. So he has, he's powered, uh, an adult size big wheel. One of them like years ago now, Yeah. but he has a hole hog powering it, like driving, driving the back wheels. Like it's a monster. I think he's done a two drill one as well, <laughs> Yeah. but it's all, I think it's all CNC and all the, the gearing and all that for the bike. Yeah, yeah, you. It's worth a look. You need, you need to, I guess. Yeah. So that's that's of course uh, if you're working for uh, Bosch Professional Europe and you're listening to this, that's the kind of content you could expect if you uh, just reply on my uh, tool testing uh, forms that I keep filling out. <laughs> we'll tag you in the comments. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can easily get you a hundred views. <laughs> so think, think about that. That's it, that's a win-win for everyone. <laughs> Worth it, definitely. <laughs> I'll get I'll get you in the local newspaper and my children yeah. <laughs> try and take that thing for a drive. <laughs> and I mean, they should know their place. I mean, it's now or never because at some point the uh, Hikochi Hikochi is going to roll in and take the slot, and then they lost the <laughs> the competition forever. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah that sounds like a good place to end this episode on i think <laughs> when everyone is laughing that's a good place to go so uh thanks very it's... much kev for stepping in when glenn couldn't be thanks for having me guys being off uh, drinking miss... wine in france instead we miss him though we miss glenn a bit yeah. a bit i mean his... yeah yeah <laughs> It's it's fun and small least I, dosages. I step forward with technical difficulties anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah and so some felt... uh, squeaky chairs and some background noise. I think we all chipped in tonight uh, to uh, <laughs> to keep the atmosphere running. Wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> so, as I said, thank you very much, and uh, thank you everyone who's listened. Uh, have a good whatever you're having. Have a good bye one. bye bye. <laughs> I mean, that, that's, of course, the challenge of having one of the listeners on as a guest because we are losing out on a listener. And, of course, you... you oh, no. I'm going to listen to this. Yeah, and, and you would think that Glenn would now be a listener, but, I mean, he's the one who puts in the most <laughs> listens on the statistics, I think, yeah. <laughs>